Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This same exact event happens in Revelation chapter 6. And people were still being killed, which means the rapture had not happened yet. And in Matthew 24, we haven't seen the rapture happen yet. We've seen the tribulation, and now we've seen the end of the tribulation, and we've seen the sun and moon be darkened now. Look at verse 30. And, the, and, and what is disciples asking in, in the beginning of Matthew 24? What should be the sign of thy coming? Has he referenced his coming yet to this point? No. Has he mentioned a lot of tribulation? Yes. Has he mentioned the end of the tribulation? Yes. Has he mentioned the sun and moon being darkened? Yes. And the sun and moon being darkened and everything else, what is that signal? The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. All the other references call it that. The day of the Lord is a day of great wrath. But look at verse number 30 here in Matthew 24. And then, and then, and this is, look, and you could go back through and read Matthew 24 and look at the chronological type of words where you see, and then, and then, and then. This isn't like the whole passage. He's just, you could just mix and match it anywhere you want and put things in whatever order. He's telling them in order what happens. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The people on the earth, they're going to be sad. They're going to be mourning. We saw that in Revelation chapter 6. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Well, now they're going to finally see the Son of Man coming. Everything he said prior to this are the signs of the times of everything that's going to happen before Jesus comes back. Does it sound like these things have happened yet? Or that they're even happening right now? That Jesus can come back in the clouds in 10 minutes? No. No. It's not rational. And, and when you read the scripture, like, I have been doing some interpreting. I'll admit that, especially in the book of Daniel. Okay, I probably give the most interpreting through the book of Daniel. But as we're going through Matthew 24, am I really just adding that much interpretation other than just pointing to, hey, this is where the Bible talks about this here in, in you know, 2 Thessalonians 2, and, and look at how it all matches up with everything else that the Bible says. I'm trying not to really give a whole lot of interpretation because the Bible speaks for itself. And to come up with some other timeline of events makes no sense. When you just read the scripture, especially just comparing it to the other places in scripture that talk about the same events. Verse 31. So verse 30, we see, then they're going to see the, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, interpretation, this is what we believe as the rapture. The gathering together, the angels being sent to reap, to harvest the earth. And we've already read through a lot of the parables of Jesus Christ talking about the reaping and the harvesting. Not going to go over those. We definitely don't have time for that tonight. We're almost done. Don't worry. We're almost done because, I, I, like I said, I'm not going to finish the whole chapter tonight. We're going to go back to it next week. I just want to get through uh, what I need to get through here tonight. So the gathering together, verse 31, verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So what's he doing? He's giving him a parable. What a parable is it? Hey, when you see a fig tree... Because what happens to fig trees in the winter, or all trees in the winter, which is starting to happen right now, fall. The leaves fall off, right? The, the branches are, are pretty bare. And he says, when the branch is yet tender, so there's, there's new growth starting in the spring, and it starts putting forth leaves, you know that summer's nigh. When you see that happening outside, and you look at the fig tree, you go, oh, well, summer must be getting close because the branch is tender and there's leaves growing, right? I mean, this is, this is <laughs> I know. Really difficult concepts to grasp here. Verse number 33, so likewise ye. So in the same way, when you see that happen and you know it's close to summer, 
When ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. So what's he doing? He's giving information <laughs> and answering the very question they asked. The sign of your coming and of the end of the world. He gave them all of the information and all the way up until just the last few verses, believers are going to be on the earth because the rapture hadn't happened yet because they haven't been reaped yet. So you can look at all of those things happening and go, yep, it's coming. Oh yeah, we can see a coat. Just like I see those leaves starting to bud, I see the play. Yep, summer's coming. Well, Jesus is coming. No doubt about it. Jesus gave us all the signs. There's false Christs arising. There's, there's, there's an antichrist. There's, there's someone standing in the temple claiming to be God and going after people who actually believe in God. Yeah, there's a very clear sign. Guess what? Jesus is going to be coming soon. And that's going to give, I believe, that's going to help give us the hope and the motivation to just get out there and say, hey, it's almost over. The time is almost done. I can see the finish line. Let's finish this race. That's going to be exciting because you're going to know when this, what, you're going to be like, yeah, but aren't you just going to want to hide in fear because of all the tribulation? No, man, I noticed we're almost done. We're almost done. Let's push forward. When you're running that race and you get the cramp, you're like, no, I, but I just got to push that much harder and get to the end of the race. That's what it's going to be like.